My name is David Higgs, and I'm Professor of Organ and Chair of the Department of Organ and Historical Keyboards at the Eastman School of Music in Rochester, New York. It used to be that the organ was built for a specific function, and often this was for the church, sometimes not, sometimes for other functions. Uh, originally, organs were built as uh, 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 instruments of war. They would go in to sort of shock and awe the enemy, uh, making this loudest sound that anyone could hear. When we think of the 17th century and we look in Northern Europe, for example, we have a particular kind of organ that fulfilled a particular role, liturgically or artistically or aesthetically. Uh, then we go into the 19th century, the organ took on a different role and was uh, imitative of the orchestra of its day. Uh, in the 20th century, many things happened. We had uh, uh, organs that became almost synthesizers, really imitating the orchestral instruments that inspired it as well as instruments that wanted to go back. We had, a, we had something called the organ reform movement, which brought the instruments, one, it so, sought to bring the instruments back to the older ideals of building, the Baroque ideals. And this was really not a return, uh, per se, to the Baroque ideals, but it was sort of a, modern, a modernist take on uh, what, what uh, at the time, they interpreted as a Baroque organ. So then when we look at an organ today, we see maybe, maybe this is built in the style of X or Y, uh, or maybe this is an organ that's eclectic, that has, has uh, many different influences. And in the case of uh, the Fisk organ here at the Harvard Memorial Church, we have an organ that is eclectic and uh, utilizes sounds from, from various periods, but does that in a way that still gives the organ an identity and a, and a purpose as a, as, a, as a whole artistic statement. This is a very difficult thing to do, to meld all of these kinds of uh, styles of instruments into one. Fisk's Opus 139 has some really interesting uh, sounds, individual stops that I like very much. I think it's the first time they have uh, been inspired by a German romantic organ in a, for a particular stop called the Solicional. And this stop has a very stringy, thin quality and very quiet. It has lovely overtones. It's very sweet, very silvery. And uh, this kind of a stop uh, is all too rare in modern organs, this kind of sweet, soft stop. Another stop that I think is particularly beautiful on this organ is a French-inspired stop, the flute octaviante, which is a harmonic flute. And uh, we say this is harmonic because the flute is overblown and it actually blows an octave higher than the size of the pipe. So if this four-foot uh, uh, harmonic flute at the lowest note would be four feet, it would have to be eight feet tall and then overblown. So, here in the higher pitches of this, we have a very, very beautiful speech to the pipe. We have another harmonic flute at eight foot, again, uh, inspired by the French organs of Cavaille Col. On Opus 139 also are some very interesting reed stops. We have some French reeds in the swell, and we hear this sound. Very stately, almost makes you uh, put your hand over your heart and pledge allegiance to the uh, Fran French Republic. And these, these sounds are very exciting because we have so much good French organ music from the 19th century. So. Modern organs have different kinds of actions. This organ at Harvard has what we call mechanical action. That means I have direct control from the key through linkages and what we call trackers to the pallet that sits under the pipe that allows the air into the pipe. So I have proportional control on this organ of the sound of the pipe. So I can press the, the key very slowly, 
or I can press it very quickly and create a slight, very slight difference in the speech of the pipe. I can also release very slowly. Uh, if, I do, if I show you this to be really exaggerated, you hear how the air comes out of the pipe? So I have this proportional control. On an electric, electric action organ, I don't have that. My keys are more of an on-off switch for the, the valves under the pipe. The advantage to that is that I can have pipes all over the building. I can have sounds creeping out of the ceiling or coming up from the basement, literally. But I don't have that. I give up that control over the speeches of the pi speech of the pipes. So on this organ, I have uh, the pipes all here connected physically to me. This is a much nicer way to play because we feel this, this connection in the same way a pianist or a harpsichordist might feel the connection to the instrument. There's an old saying that, that the, uh, the room, the acoustic of the building, is the most important stop on the organ. If the room is a drier acoustic, we might play the chords in a more legato or more connected fashion so that when one key comes up after I press it, then as that one comes up, I press the next one like this. When this key starts to come up, I'm gonna already start to press this one down and overlap slightly. To give the impression of a larger acoustic in certain kinds of music. In, in a very live room, I might play those same chords I would let one key come up and then press the next one down. The room here at Harvard is, um, is a resonant room, but is not as live as many of the traditional organ spaces where, where you'll play a chord and you'll hear it for three or four or five seconds uh, continuing in the room. Uh, it's not that way. This is a much more direct but resonant sound. We have this uh, vaulted ceiling, which causes the organ to be very, very direct. It shoots the sound right down to the listener. Uh, so we hear the sound almost as if we're right up here. The, the difference, in fact, when you sit in a pew downstairs as to when you sit right up here in the, in the balcony is not all so great because the ceiling amplifies that sound as it moves. This is a piece that I played at the inauguration of the... Uh, Fisk Opus 139 here at Harvard. And uh, it's a piece written by Arvo Pert called Annum per Annum, Year by Year. It was written for the 900th anniversary of the cathedral in Speyer, Germany. And uh, it's an organ mass, a concert mass. It begins with a movement uh, that's untitled, but plays on the full organ. And then while you're playing, repeating this chord, someone turns off the motors to the organ. In other words, turns off the wind. And then as you play, you gradually deplete the wind from the reservoir. So you hear the sound just almost like it's as if it's melting away.